Welcome to Dude RV. Hey, I really appreciate you stopping by and you got here just in time. Just in time to do some, some more tent camping Texas style. I have journeyed forth, went north and east, and I am in, in one small parcel of federally owned public land in the great state of Texas. This is the Caddo National Grasslands. There's supposedly a lake right down here. I'm actually looking for a good place to pitch the tent. We got some, some really, really good tent camping weather for the next several days, except for, you know, the possibility of thunderstorms and hail and tornadoes. If it were not for that, well, the temperature's perfect. Now this, this is uh, campsite number one, and it's on the, I guess I could have driven the truck down here. I didn't know that. The campsite number one is on the south side of the public land. There, it's it's a hundred percent primitive camping. There are no facilities of any kind, and the road's pretty pretty rough too. And there is a a, a fair amount of trash from people just not cleaning up after themselves. The wind is out of the north and it is chilly. And that is so hard to believe because we're at the end of May, 2022. So there is water access here. We won't be putting a boat in the water today though. Drove through some pretty, pretty forest before we get in the truck and drive away. I just wanted to share these big trees with you. We're on the kind of a transition between the Blackland Prairies, the East Texas Piney Woods, and the Post Oak Savannas. Look at this big, huge, huge oak tree covered in poison ivy. I think this was probably a vault toilet. That's uh, what it was. No, wasn't a vault toilet. Maybe some kind of old pump house. Got to be on the lookout here. This is timber rattler country. All right, let's go do some driving. So I've arrived at the Bodark Trailhead campground. This is an equestrian campground. We're just gonna do a, we're gonna do a little drive through.
That's a pretty nice equestrian campground, if I do say so myself. It, of course, it's primitive, but it's very shady. So now I'm at the Coffee Mill Lake campground. There's a lot of trailheads out here. And I I may be incorrect in this, but it, it appears that there's primitive camping at the trailhead. If you have a van, you can definitely you know, just park and sleep in the van. Let me give you a look at the Coffee Mill campground. So far, I'm, I'm lagging the equestrian camping area better. I mean, it's not bad for what it is, but the equestrian area was, I thought that was a, just a prettier campsite. Let's go down here and see some fishing stuff. Coffee Mill Lake actually does have a boat ramp. It's right over there. And they have a public access fishing dock. How y'all doing? Yeah. Catching any fish? No, not really. Not really. That's not very promising. <laughs> what do you got there, fish finder? No, sir. This is this is a camera. Apparently, the fish are not biting. That's because I showed up, I guess. Those 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 gentlemen look a bit chilly because of that north wind. All right, let's go find some more. Caddo National Grassland stuff. So now I'm at West Lake Crockett Campground. So let's let's check this out. Most interesting. All right, let's go see some more stuff. So now I'm at the East Lake, East Lake Crockett day use area. Let's go find some more stuff. So I've decided where I'm gonna camp tonight. Maybe tomorrow night too. Although the weather's really about to go south uh, tomorrow. But for tonight, I'm in site number four in the West Crockett Campground. West Crockett Lake Campground. <laughs> I have it all to myself. And I chose this location primarily because of cell reception cell reception at the other two campgrounds was was pitiful uh, 
Actually, I couldn't hardly get a signal at all, but I got a, I got a good signal here. I can watch YouTube videos on the phone. That's all that matters. <laughs> and I can call the wife and let her know that I'm okay. Um, site number four. There's not much to, you know, to, I'll give you a site review. There's, it won't take long. There's no pad. You have to park out here. There's no electricity. The water's shared. It's between sites, but that's not bad. I mean, at least we do have water. Uh, and I actually have a water hose. So if I want to move it a little closer, I, I have a water hose with me. We have a fire ring. We are in national forest kind of property, so we can harvest downfall deadwood. They don't want us cutting trees that are living. We have a barbecue cooker but I carry my own. The ubiquitous lantern hook, so we're good. We can camp in style. Got a concrete picnic table that has seen some, some better days. And a nice flat spot for the, the bell tent. And I, yes, I'm using the bell tent on this journey because I really like the bell tent. <laughs> I do, I like it. Uh, but I was planning on when I, when I put all this trip together in my mind, I was coming out here to do an actual live in-person demo of the Zero Breeze portable air conditioner in a tent camping situation. So I brought the Zero Breeze. I won't be needing it. It's going to be in the upper 50s tonight. Right now it's in the, it's about 70 degrees. Maybe that, and the wind is chilly. So I'll be using the sleeping bag, not the air conditioner. That's all right, I'm, I'm camping. I'm good. There's a trail right there. I, I think I'm gonna give Little Red a run, maybe. I certainly gotta go find some firewood. There's one person on the fishing dock down there. And that's it. Now there's, there's a lot of road noise. Not a lot. But when, in there, when there is road noise, it's loud. Because the county road is right up there. Uh, and it's a, it's a really good road. And so people drive really fast. And really loud. So, just saying. All right, let me finish settling in here. I gotta go fill out my slip and I'll cut back in with more. Stay tuned, more to come. You know something that really bothers me is when I, I see on the news where people are celebrating in one form or another by releasing balloons. Helium filled balloons. Number one, there's a helium shortage. What are you doing wasting resources? Number two, where do you think those balloons go? They go right here in the national forest. They don't dissolve. They don't just disappear. You're, you're littering. Stop, please. Today's video is brought to you by... Welcome to your secret weapon to finding the perfect campsite. Campground virtual tours are here, they're real, and they're available for you. Have you ever been to Joshua Tree National Park? We have now. You're in Jumbo Rocks Campground, the most popular campground within that national park, and you're taking a look around. You're seeing the roads, you're seeing the sites, you're seeing how far away that restroom is from those sites. Details never before available to you as a camper are at your fingertips right now. You can even enter the dates of your stay. I'm gonna be there on September 14th. You enter that date, hit confirm, and your map will update showing you which sites are green and available for your stay. Click on them and jump up to and take a look at that particular campsite. Is this one right for you? If it is, that's a pretty cool spot, isn't it? If it is, click on it, click book. And there you go, you can book that campsite right now. Campground virtual tours are available, as noted, for over 860 locations all across the United States. Go to campgroundviews.com, click on the virtual tours tab, and you'll see all the tours we have available right now. Note there's pages. Simply click on the pages to load more results, 
and it'll update the map and the listings below with the different campgrounds we have available. If you want to go by state, click the Regions tab, and you can easily go to the various states that we currently have tours available of campgrounds all over the place. The Campground Virtual Tours are a game-changing experience, and we invite you to join now by going to campgroundviews.com, clicking on Join, and signing up today. The little link is right up there. All right, back to building my fire. Well, according to the people on the fishing dock, the fish still aren't biting. The wind down there is is still frigid. Trails are too rough for little red. Uh, they, these trails, you either need a, a, a mountain bike, a horse, or you, you got to walk. They're they're not traveled enough to make them scooter friendly. So what else are you gonna do? Build a big fire. Apparently, there was a lot of wind damage in this area, so there's a lot of down trees. So some of this wood is still kind of, it's not, it's not well seasoned yet. So you got to get it hot, which means you got to build a big fire. All right. I'm going to sit here and have a beer and then think about fixing supper. I'll probably pick up the camera tomorrow. I think we're done for this evening. Stay tuned. More to come from the Caddo National Grasslands. Tent camping, Texas style. So I've come over to West Lake Crockett Campground. Here at the Caddo Grasslands. This thing caught my attention yesterday when I was driving through, there, but there was a tent here. And look at that, somebody has left a fire burning. I'm gonna throw some water on that. I guess the one, the, the, corp, the, the CCC built this facility back in the 30s. There must have been a group pavilion of, or group dining hall or something here that's typically where you found the the fireplaces in the structures built by the ccc the civilian conservation corps so, supposedly there's a trail that goes over to the the dam you can't see it from here but i'm gonna make sure you get a look at it after i put that fire out uh, if you're allergic to poison ivy, you sure don't want to be bushwhacking here. <laughs> All of that is poison ivy. And of course, first thing we see is a bunch of litter. Why? Why is it necessary to leave your trash? be a neat overflow to check out. I bet we can get a really good echo down there. This trail has had more traffic on it than the campground trail. I guess this must go back out to the road. Let's, let's, I'm gonna see if I can do it. Oh no. Going down will be a, I can get down, but can I get back up? There we 
are. The last time, ooh, we got a good echo, echo, echo. Last time we were in one of these kind of spillways, there were some giant carp in the water. I don't see any. But it is echoey. United States Forest Service, 1968. So this this particular dam was not built by the the CCC. All right, we've come to the end of our dam adventure. And now I gotta walk back on the, the dam trail, get back to the truck. So there are actually four trails here in the Caddo National Grasslands. Mostly the, they seem, it seems to be geared toward the equestrian set, but I'm sure you can find this information on the internet. Uh, I didn't see it anywhere. But I am right now at the day use trailheads. So there's plenty of places to park your trailer or your car. And there's the the start of the trails. They even provide you with a place to get some potable water. Remember to stay hydrated on those trails. That's what the name is, the Caddo National Grasslands. You hear all them, all the birds. We're still overcast and gloomy. It's supposed to be that way until this afternoon, and then it's gonna get interesting. <laughs> we've got a, we've got a, a setup for severe thunderstorms developing. I, I know my. My my bell tent is it's a great four season tent. I'm I'm not interested in finding out how well it fares in severe thunderstorms, much less tornadoes. So I'm gonna pack it in. The last night was very, very quiet. I, this this was probably one of the quietest campgrounds after the road noise. Now there's not a whole lot of road noise. Every once in a while you get cars going by and they seem to be all high performance Japanese engines rev to the max. Uh, or motorcycles. Not sure which I wasn't out there watching. That was on a Sunday. Today's on Monday. So tonight it would probably be even more quiet. There's not much in the way of commuter traffic out here. I like the campground. The vault toilet for what it is is clean. It doesn't it's, it doesn't make you want to vomit when you walk in there. There's a lot of litter scattered around and and we're talking litter that's been here a while. There's beer can pop tops on the ground. Uh, there's no campground host, you know, picking up. So whoever comes out, if you come camping out here, make sure you pick up after yourself. There's no dumpsters, there's no trash cans. And there's a big sign at every campground. Pack it in, pack it out. If we don't 
pack it in and pack it out, then we may no longer have the privilege of using these facilities. Because it costs money to come in and clean up. I'm just saying, please pick up your garbage. I, I appreciate that. When I, I was telling Yappy about this place and she said, oh, I, I, I gotta go there too. So we'll be back. I'm not sure when, but we will be back. You should, you should come pay a, if you're anywhere close, you should come pay a visit to the Caddo National Grasslands. This is about as peaceful as you can get in North Texas. It really is. If this is your first visit to Dude RV, I'd be honored if you'd consider clicking on that subscribe button. And for those of you who have been following along, that's why I'm here. <laughs> that's why I'm out here in the Caddo National Grasslands Campground, just for you. And thank you for that, because I wouldn't have come out here if, if I wasn't looking for content for you, if I was not trying to help you go camping. And for my patrons, Thank you. It is most appreciated. You rock. All right. Y'all come back now. You hear?